Senator Cory Booker, the latest tonight to call for legalization of marijuana on the federal level, joining a list of 2020 candidates trying to break out of a crowded field by taking increasingly progressive positions. From slavery rep reparations to the Green New Deal to Medicare for All to abolishing ICE, the list goes on. You see it there. Joining us now to talk about it, Zach Friend, former spokesperson, Obama for America, and Matt Mkoviak, president, Potomac Strategy Group. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Good Thanks for having us on. Us. Okay, so uh, the president talked with our Sean Hannity a little bit earlier tonight. Here's what he says about this whole Green New Deal idea. A hundred trillion dollars, and you couldn't do it for that. Yeah. But uh, it's it's and it's not even the money. It's so ridiculous. No planes. Let's not fly anymore. It, it is crazy. But personally, they should go with it. I love it. It's one of the greatest plans I've ever seen. As long <laughs> as long as they're the ones that have to sell it. Zach, he says he loves it. He thinks this is great for 2020 for him. Well, I, I, I get what he's trying to say here, but I also recognize that in the presidential primary this year, similar to uh, some of what was even experienced in the Republican primary in 2016, there's going to be a pretty strong movement to the left in order to win this nomination. The mm -hmm. question is going to be, can you make the transition mm -hmm. in the general election? Because ultimately, it's still going to be decided in a lot of those states across the Midwest that still care mostly about these bread and butter issues, uh, specifically the economy and other issues associated with it, and maybe aren't as interested in some of these social policy issues that are being discussed. Yeah. On the Washington Washington Examiner, uh, Democrats getting out on a dangerously left-wing limb. Michael Barone writes this, uh, Democratic presidential candidates, perhaps isolated in liberal cocoons, don't seem to understand their vulnerability on issues like reparations, nine-month abortions, and the Green New Deal. They assume their media friends can rescue them, but what if they can't? Matt? Yeah, I think Democrats think that uh, whoever gets nominated is going to be Trump. I think they, they're overconfident in that sense. And Barone writes about how California uh, well, I'd, California is definitely not voting for President Trump. Right, but by itself, <laughs> That's not happening. By itself, it, it sort of lowers Trump's approval rating because it's because he's so unpopular in California, mm -hmm. and that's not obviously how you determine who's going to be president or not. So, um, these issues that are, I think, are not majority issues are becoming litmus tests in the Democratic primary. Reparations, legalized marijuana, Medicare for all, Green New Deal. Uh, these are simply not majority issues yet. Maybe the Democratic nominee can sell it to, to a majority of the public. We'll have to see. Uh, I think Trump and the Republicans feel good about the direction the Democrats are going. They're going so far to the left, it is going to be hard to track back unless they nominate a more moderate candidate, a Biden or a Michael mm -hmm. Bloomberg, who probably does have more appeal to the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see this. On, I mean, it happens in primaries on both sides. Now, as far as 2020, Michael um, Cohen said this yesterday when he was testifying. He said, given my experience working for President Trump, I fear that if he loses the election in 2020, that there will never be a peaceful transition of power. That's a pretty out there statement, but it's not the only one. Donnie Deutsch, who's known the president forever, um, he says this about where he thinks the president could go. If impeachment starts to happen, even if he loses an election, whatever in a movie you think this guy is capable of doing to create a civil war, he will. Do, I know that's I'm not speaking in hyperbole. He's not speaking in hyperbole, Zach. He says yeah, Cohen says he's not going peacefully if he loses. And, you know, Deutsch says civil war is coming. Yeah, I don't know that I quite buy into that kind of rhetoric, actually. I mean, I think I think that one thing is fair to say, we are remarkably polarized as a country mm -hmm. right now. Uh, I mean, I know that there's a lot of viewers that are watching this network that don't agree with me just because they see that I'm a former Obama spokesperson. I mean, we're at a point where it's tough for people to even hear yeah. what the other side is saying. But I'll say this, it's not, it doesn't help anything to have these kinds of conversations. I'll, I'll argue on my side that I don't think that the president helps with his rhetoric, but I'll also say the president didn't cause this problem either. I just think that in many respects, he doesn't help it with his rhetoric. And I just don't see that these kinds of conversations move anything forward for the country and bringing people together at all. We get headlines, Matt. Yeah, they do. And Donnie Deutsch, you know, specializes in this kind of hyperbole. Um, I think it's over the top. There's no reason to believe that that would happen. You've seen predictions about how he's going to fire Robert Mueller or shut down the Mueller inquiry. Again, that was hyperbole. That hasn't happened. Look, if President Trump was worried about losing, uh, he wouldn't run for re-election. And he, every signal that we can po possibly see, they're hiring senior staff, they have space, mm -hmm. they're raising money, is he's running for re-election. So look, it's going to be a divisive, very competitive election. The country will come back together. It always does. I feel like the last one just got over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Zach and Matt, Another thank one. you both for coming in. Thank it's you. Over.